Hello there, I hope you're ready for a special episode, because I, for reasons I don't fully understand and aren't related to the Legion's Imperialis announcement, since, you know, I painted most of these before that, I decided that this episode would consist entirely of smaller scale models than normal. That's right, it's a Tiny lad special. First up, there's a Kazinti ship from Starfleet Battles, kindly sent in by Walter. The Kazinti are an alien race Larry Niven wrote about that he put into Star Trek canon via an episode of the animated series he wrote. Normally, these ships are presented as having a red colour scheme, but ever the hipster, I decided to paint this one in the scheme that their animated series ship was shown in instead. Also, I think this might be the first model I've ever painted with a proper hex base on it. I don't know how I've avoided that, being someone who collects old models, but there we go. Next, we have a small Covenant of Antarctica fleet for Dystopian Wars, a game I did not know existed when Patrick sent these minis in, and now I only vaguely know stuff about. But painting some steampunk submarines seemed like fun, so I threw myself into giving these a quick coat of paint basing the scheme on pure vibes, so I don't know if this is a weird scheme for the faction or anything. First, there's a couple of what I believe are called Diogenes class frigates. You can probably tell the scheme is like 90% just a lead belcher dry brush over black primer, but I think it works really well for an ironclad look, especially at this scale. Next, there's three Plutarch class heavy destroyers, essentially the same as the little ones, but beefed up a little bit. Big fan of the little screw drives at the rear. Finally, there's the big Aristotle-class battleship. This thing is actually pretty big, insert helpful size comparison here, and technically has a little more colour on it since it has wooden decks. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this quick scheme. After all, I don't know if I'll ever actually get a chance to play a game with these minis, so I didn't really want to spend all day on each one. But I think for a quick scheme, it came out pretty well. On the subject of ships, next I've got some sword-class frigates sent in by Modhail. To any of you who missed the earlier episodes of this series, I painted a lot of these 3D printed versions of Battlefleet Gothic ships, and these are no different. In fact, I did the base coats of these way back with the others, but didn't get around to finishing off the detailing, so it's nice to finally get these done. Okay, from here on out, we're fully into epic territory. I've started painting a couple of very small epic forces, one painted conventionally, and the other one painted mostly with contrast. The conventionally painted one is Orcs, Death Skulls to be specific, and the models you see here were sent in by Lord Hedgepig, Spons, Adam and Matthew. First we have a couple of Grot bases. These are obscenely small, even for epic minis. They are very much something you are going to go mildly cross-eyed painting, but it's all bigger from here. Then we've got some knobs. With a lot of these models, I've put less minis on the base than the usual five since I think they get a little too overcrowded, and this one was no exception. I originally had all the flags being blue, but since they're wearing so much blue armour, I thought that looked really flat, so I decided to mix it up a little bit. Basically, they're all flying their own personal heraldry, or whatever an orc would call that. Fancy shapes, what's mine, I guess. Now we've got some truly adorable boar boys. I didn't need to give the pigs little pink noses, but frankly, it was too cute not to do so. These are mounted on a two pence piece, since there wasn't really a particularly consistent way to base, well, pretty much anything in Epic to be honest, and this was not an uncommon solution. Then there's the Dreadnought, also on a two pence piece, which is from a little bit later than the other Epic stuff I've been painting here, and it's also the only metal model that I've painted here today, apart from the Kazinti ship, which does explain the lovely amount of detail on this thing. Up next is a couple of battle wagons. The first is, well, an actual battle wagon, one of the old plastic ones, I think it's from the 1991 Space Marine box set, which I feel took a paint job remarkably well considering how simple the sculpt is. The second one I made from a damaged Land Raider and so has some of the tiniest custom work I've ever done. I'm particularly proud of the new front end that is entirely scratch built apart from the little grill poking out. Finally for the Orcs is a Stomper, which has a ton of fun little details going on like the little tiled roof on the back, and is probably the closest thing to a regular Warhammer model I've painted here, since it's, you know, a bipedal thing and it's nearly the right height. 
Now we've got those contrast painted marines, who I decided to paint as Sons of Medusa since I've always liked the scheme and striking scorpion green seemed like it would be perfect for a particularly vibrant version of them. These models were sent in by Adam, Jeremy, and I'm sorry, I don't know who sent in the Contemptor. If it's you, please yell at me in the comments and I'll add you to the description. As I mentioned before, we foolishly did not keep a list of exactly who sent what, and occasionally it really bites me in the arse. Sorry. The infantry here is sadly a little ropey since they were already primed and I wasn't sure how much I fancied trying to strip models that were only a few millimetres tall. Although I probably should have since once they had enough white on them to accept the contrast correctly, the paint was a bit too thick. The small size means you don't really have the same kind of tolerances as you do with bigger scales. Not that you'd notice on the table they're far too small, but it does bother me. My leader here is a little lonely on his base, only having two other guys to keep him company, which was done for overcrowding purposes, but I do kind of wish I'd put at least one more guy on there now. Also, yes, painting abstracted versions of the Sons of Medusa iconography on those flags was a nightmare. Thank you for asking. The vehicles feel far more successful though. A Contemptor with the teeniest tiniest purity seal on him, a Rhino and a Land Raider. I really like how these turned out and it's pretty much just the silver that wasn't done with contrast, so they were incredibly quick to do. And I am really impressed by how much better the contrast paints have gotten since the first batch of them, which I wasn't super impressed with. They did the job, but I didn't think they did it well enough to integrate them into my usual painting, you know? But the modern stuff, especially the super vibrant ones, yeah, those are great. I don't think they'd ever become my main way of painting or anything, I'm far too set in my ways. But for projects like this, it's perfect. Plus, doing a handful of models in these two styles was an interesting contrast no pun intended, since the control and detail you get with traditional painting takes a long time, but if you're willing to sacrifice a little of that, then contrast can do something very similar in seconds. Anyway, thank you for watching this Tiny Lads special. I hope you enjoyed it, since there'll no doubt be more tiny models showing up in the future too, just alongside more regularly scaled models. Big thanks to everyone who sent these models in, it's been a lot of fun to paint some stuff that's quite different from what I usually do, so I am very appreciative. Also, I do remember that the two dreads were technically sent for Snipe, but don't worry, I asked them if it was okay if I painted them, and they said it was. Honest. And with that said, I shall see you all next time.